I'm looking at uh, a wonderful copy, um, a collection of essays by Lionel Trilling, who was um, very active in the 1950s, 60s, 70s, I would say, uh, as a, a literary critic, uh, teaching and, and professor at the University of Columbia. And uh, <clears throat> his essay is his essays are collected under the title "The Moral Obligation to Be Intelligent." Um, recently, I've been uh, thinking about asking people for fun whom they might uh, list off the top of their heads as as intellectuals. And when I started to do this topic just now, before I grabbed the book. I uh, made an error uh, and said the moral obligation to be intellectual. I corrected myself. It's the moral obligation to be intelligent here. But then I ask uh, any of you that might be listening this question, who would you, off the top of your head, anyone, po politicians, uh, writers, uh, what have you, who would you cite as an intellectual uh, and uh, who would you cite as, as very much not an intellectual. Uh, I feel that Obama is an, and, and, and the Clintons are intellectuals. I feel that Bush uh, is not. Um, I certainly think Charlie Rose is, and, and, and many of his guests are intellectuals. Uh, but I asked myself just now, the moral obligation to be intelligent. Well, one concept that we have of intelligence is something that we're more or less born with and we can't do much about. We may be born brilliant and perhaps choose not to develop it, but we have this innate talent for learning or writing or memory or what have you. And others, uh, perhaps one are born with less gifts, less ability. They have to struggle very hard to get even an, an elementary um, degree of sorts. And no matter how hard they try, they can't really go advance much beyond the, the tether of their natural abilities. Um, <clears throat> just looking at uh, the contents here, we have um, the America of John Dos Passos, Hemingway and his critics, T.S. Eliot's, Eliot's politics, the immortality owed Kipling, reality in America, art and neuroses, uh, manners, morals, and the novel, the Kinsey Report, the Huckleberry Finn, the Princess, uh, Casa Massima, Wordsworth, and the rabbis. Um, I should mention Lionel Trilling, his, uh, his background, his family is Jewish, and I think he was raised in Brooklyn, but uh, his uh, rather secular Jewish background, he, in one essay <coughs> he mentions that he, when he was supposed to be doing Torah studies, he was actually reading um, uh, Pirka Bot, which was in the front of the book. It means the sayings of the fathers, uh, rabbinical sayings, which I suppose uh, which interested him as a boy and was far more... Um, interesting to him <coughs> from uh, a secular point of view than uh, what he was supposed to be uh, studying, the Hebrew or what, what have you. Uh, Dean, uh, William Dean Howells and the Root of Modern Taste, the poet is hero, Keats in his letters, George Orwell and Political Truth, the situation of the American intellectual at the present time, Mansfield Park, Isaac Babel, the morality of inertia, the smi that smile of Parmenides made me think. The Last Lover, a speech on Robert Frost. Oh, he got some heck from that in the press. He said something about Frost, uh, who was quite aged at the time, resemb resembling the bald eagle, the American bald eagle with his white head. Um, on the teaching of modern literature, the Levi's Snow, uh, 
Levy Snow Controversy, The Fate of Pleasure, James Joyce and His Letters, The Mi Mind in the Modern World, Art, Will, and Necessity, Why We Read, read Jane Austen. Uh, I have the habit, <clears throat> when I read certain books, I, I make a little mark of a page in the front. I'll put page numbers that catch my attention. And there you can see I did 185 and 68. And uh, I always have to go back and look. Let's see, I have a page mark here under manners, morals, and the novel. And I highlighted the, where it says, the word reality is an honorific word. And the future historian will naturally try to discover our notion of its pejorative opposite appearance, mere appearance. Uh, he really has some wonderful uh, sentences and paragraphs uh, in this book. Uh, let me see. I'm, I'm, I was about, I was distracted from my task of looking up page 185, and here we have 184, 185. Then there is this, this sayings of Akiba's. Oh, this is from where he was reading the Pir Kabot. Uh, the sayings of the rabbinical fathers. Then there is this this saying of Akiba, all is foreseen, and yet free will is given. And the world is judged by grace, and yet all is according to work, unquote, uh, Akiba. Uh, with how handsome a boldness it handles the problem of fate and free will, or grace and works handles the problem by stating it as an antinomy, uh, escaping the woeful claustral preoccupation with the alternatives, but not their grandeur. This refusal to be fixed either in fate or in free will, either in grace or in works, and the recognition of both are characteristic of, of, of Wordsworth. Uh, so this is from Wordsworth and the rabbis. Uh, I remember in college, uh, a Jewish classmate had a, an edition of the uh, Talmud, and I fl casually opened it to the first page, and it said something to the same effect, that, well, you know, of course, God foreknows all of our choices, and yet that foreknowledge in no way robs us of our free will at the moment that we make the choice. Um, I also marked down page 68. Um, what did we have here? Page 67, page 68. Uh, this is from uh, Lionel Trilling's uh, essay on Kipling. He said, um, I, ha I have said that the old antagonism between liberalism and Kipling is now abated by time and events. Yet it is still worth saying, and it is not extravagant to say, that Kipling was one of liberalism's major intellectual misfortunes. John Stuart Mill, when he urged all liberals to study the conservative uh, Coleridge, Samuel Taylor Coleridge, said that we should pray to have enemies who make us worthy of ourselves. Um, funny, I was just listening to uh, uh, the Charlie Rose show, and Christopher Hitchens said that uh, he often learns the most from uh, bitter arguments with people that he utterly disagrees with. So th there's really something to be said for the, this notion of uh, learning something from our bitter enemies. Um, here's something uh, from Art and Neurosis. Uh, and Edmund Wilson, in his striking phrase, the wound and the bow, Oh, time to stop.